Hello there. In this session, we will discuss normal reaction. Now, normal reaction is the force that is exerted through contact. So, any force which is exerted through contact is basically called normal reaction. So, most of the forces that you can think of are usually exerted through contact. And we represent such forces through normal reaction. Let's see an example. Let's say there is a block lying on floor. We have been taking this example very often because this is the simplest case to analyze. Now, before we go into details of this, let's talk about weight. You already know what mass is. Now, there is a force which is called gravitational force. I am sure you are aware about it. So, gravitational force is the force between any two objects that has mass. We will study about it in the later chapters. So, Newton discovered this force and he gave the laws of gravitation. So, these laws tell us that any object that has mass attracts every other object that has mass. Now, this force is significant only when one of the two bodies has very huge mass. Like you would never feel the gravitational force of a person next to you. But, there is an object very close to you which is very massive. That is the earth. Right. So, earth pulls everything with a significant force towards itself. And the force with which earth pulls objects towards itself is called the weight of the object. So, weight is basically the gravitational force exerted by earth. Now, weight of any object is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, we have already discussed acceleration due to gravity as the acceleration that everybody has close to the surface of earth. We also saw that value of this acceleration is close to 10 meter per second. Right. So, if there is a body which has mass 5 kg, its weight would be equal to 50 newtons. So, a body of mass 5 kg has a weight of 50 newtons. Right. So, now let's get back to our example where we had a box lying on a floor. Right. So, in this case, let's think about the forces which are acting. The first one is fairly obvious, which is the weight of this object. Now, which direction will it act in? The gravitational force always acts downwards, right? We know this by experience. So, in this case, this block will have its weight acting downwards. And if the mass of this block is m, then the weight is mass into gravity. Right. So, this is the first force which acts on this block. Now, if this was the only force that was acting, the block would have started to move downwards. But we know that a block placed on ground stays there. Right. So, that means the ground must certainly be applying some force to prevent its motion. Also, since it's not moving, we can tell that the force it is applying must be equal to its weight. Right. But let's first focus on this force that is being applied. This force acts through contact. Right. So, we will call this force normal reaction. So, we will show an upward force. We will denote it by the symbol N. And this N is the normal reaction by the ground. Right. So, in this particular case, since the block does not move, we can say that the normal force is equal to the weight of this block. Right. Now, this normal reaction force has some properties. The first one being that normal is always a pushing force. So, normal is always a pushing force. What does this mean? Let's look at it closely. 
so now when the block was placed on ground it did not fall further down this was because the ground was supporting its weight by applying an upward force so it was basically pushing it upwards right but when you try to lift that same block does that surface resist this uh, attempt of yours to lift this block it does not right think about the book placed on top of a table when you place it on top the book stays there because the table supports it way, its weight by applying some normal reaction it pushes it upwards but when you try to lift that book do you get any extra force from the table you don't right so that is a property of normal reaction it will only push objects it will never pull them towards itself right so first property is that normal is always a pushing force the second property is that normal always acts perpendicular to the surface of contact to understand this let's take another example let's say we have a plane inclined like this so such a plane is often referred to as an inclined plane right so we have an inclined plane on this inclined plane let me place a box like this right so let's once again think about the forces which are acting on this block I'm sure you can see that if we keep that block like that it would probably slop slide down but at this particular moment when it is there let's think about the forces which are acting so once again assuming that the mass of the block is m the first force that acts is the downward force mg please note that no matter which orientation you keep this block in the weight of this block will always be vertically downwards its direction will not change right so the first force is the weight of this block which acts downward the second force you can guess is some normal that this plane is going to offer the question is which direction will that normal act in now we saw that normal always acts perpendicular to the surface of contact in this case the surface of contact is this and is inclined so the normal reaction will act perpendicular to the surface so this is the direction in which normal will act right so normal reaction is always a pushing force and it always acts perpendicular to the surface right now let's look at an example and understand this further let's say i have two blocks one of 5 kg the other of 10 kg and there is a 30 newton force applied to the block of 5 kg now we wish to find the acceleration of each of these blocks right so first of all we can directly argue that in the situation which is shown the two blocks will clearly move together right so if they always move together they will certainly have the same acceleration so in this case acceleration of 5 kg mass will be equal to the acceleration of the 10 kg mass right so let's now go back to what we had learned in the last session if you recall we had discussed that whenever you start your force analysis you should first of all be very clear about your system that is you should be clear about which object or which collection of objects you are going to consider the forces on and secondly once you have finalized the system you should draw a free body diagram and show all the forces not the objects right so the sequence is first identify the system and second of all draw a free body diagram which we will in short call fbd right so first of all i'll solve this problem by considering two different systems one being 5 kg block 
the other being the 10 kg block. So let's first list down the forces on the 5 kg block. So I'm representing the 5 kg block by a point now. The first force is clearly the 30 Newton force which acts towards the right. Next we know that this block has some weight. If its mass is 5 kg, its weight is 50 Newton and it acts downwards. Right. Now, what are the other forces that must be acting that might be acting on this 5 kg block? The first one that comes to mind is probably the normal reaction that would be offered by the ground because this block is lying on some surface and hence there must be some normal offered by this lower surface of contact. Right. Clearly that normal will act vertically upwards because the contact is horizontal. So let's label that force as N1. N1 being the force which the ground is offering to the 5 kg block. Right. Now when you push this 5 kg block with a 30 Newton force, the block will try to move forward. But the 10 kg block, which is stationary, will try to push it in the other direction. So we can clearly see there would be some force between these two blocks. This force is once again being applied through contact. So we can say there is a normal reaction between the 5 kg and the 10 kg block. Right. So this force is also a normal reaction and once again it will act perpendicular to the surface of contact. For the second case we see that the surface of contact is vertical and hence the force that is offered would be horizontal. Right? Also I am sure you can see that this force will be towards the left. This 10 kg block will push 5 kg towards left. So let's apply that force as N2. So N2 is the force that the 10 kg block applies on the 5 kg block. Right. So this completes the free body diagram for the first system that we have. That is the 5 kg block. Right. So now moving to the 10 kg block, let's once again list down all the forces which are acting on it. So the first one will clearly be the weight of this object which is 100 newtons because this block has a mass of 10 kg. So mass into gravity makes it 100 newtons. Right. What next? We know that if it is lying on ground there must be a normal which is offered by the ground to support its weight. Right. So let's call that normal reaction as N3. So N3 is the normal by the ground on the 10 kg block. Right. Finally, there is some force between the 5 kg and the 10 kg block. Now, recall the third law. It says that every action has equal and opposite reaction. So if the 10 kg block applied N2 amount of force on the 5 kg block, then this 5 kg block will apply an equal and opposite force on the 10 kg block. Right? So we would see a rightward force of N2. Let me explain this again. The normal force which is between 5 kg and the 10 kg will be there as an action reaction pair which means that 5 kg applies some force on 10 kg and the 10 kg in turn applies the same amount of force on 5 kg but in the opposite direction. So we have represented those forces by N2 which are acting on 5 kg and 10 kg in the opposite direction. Right. So this completes the free body diagrams for both the systems that we had taken. You can once check and see if there are any other forces left. Right. So, once we have these forces, once we have listed down all the forces, identified our systems and listed down the forces, the next is 
the simplest task which is to apply the second law of motion which is force is equal to mass into acceleration. So when we do that, we will do that separately for the x and the y axis. If you recall, we had discussed that motion along x is completely independent of the motion along y. So that is exactly the idea behind writing separate equations for x and separate equations for y because whatever happens in x does not affect what happens in y. Right. So let's first talk about the y axis. This is because we know none of these blocks will move along the y axis. So along the y axis the acceleration is zero which means the net force is zero. So if the net force is zero then the two forces which are acting will obviously balance each other which gives us that for the first system we can say that N1 is equal to 50 Newtons. Right? Similarly for the second system we can say that N3 is equal to 100 Newtons. Once again because these blocks have z no movement along the y-axis and hence have zero acceleration in this direction. Right. Now to write the equations along x, let us assume that both of them move rightwards with an acceleration a. Right. So when we write the second law of motion, f equal to ma, we will write the net force on that system is equal to mass into acceleration. What I mean by that is like for the first system we have 30 Newtons towards the right and n2 amount of force towards the left. So the right hand side we know is simply mass into acceleration. The mass for this is 5 so the right hand side becomes 5 into a. On the left hand side we have to write the force. So when we write the force we will write down the net force which is acting on the system and the net force in this case would be 30 minus N2. The minus sign is because N2 was acting in the opposite direction. Now there is another thing to note here. I would I have written it as 30 minus N2 but why not N2 minus 30? This is because I have taken the acceleration towards the right which means the rightward force must be greater and that is the reason why I have written it as 30 minus N2 equal to 5A. So whichever direction you choose as the direction of acceleration that is the direction in which you have to assume that the forces are greater. Right. So the first equation becomes 30 minus N2 is equal to 5A. Coming to the second equation for the 10 uh, kg block, we see that there is a single force N2. So the equation is fairly simple that is N2 is equal to 10 into A. Right. So now I'm sure you can solve this equation. All you have to do is add these two equations and you get that 30 is equal to 15A. And hence, A is equal to 2 meter per second square. So this is the value of acceleration for both of these masses. We obtain this simply by adding these two equations along X. Let me call this 1 and 2. So this result was obtained by adding equation 1 and equation 2. Right. So once we get this value, let's try to find out the normal reaction. If you substitute A as 2, you see that N2 has a value of 20 Newtons. Right. So once we got these values, knowing these values, let's once again look at the situation. What I'll now do is draw the two blocks separately while showing the forces they are exerting on each other. So this is your 5 kg block and this is your 10 kg block. A 
force of 30 newton was applied on the smaller block as a result of this since this block was being pushed in the other direction the 10 kg block applied a force of 20 newton on this 5 kg block right and then the 5 kg responded to this action by an equal and opposite reaction and applied a 20 newton force on the 10 kg block right so this shows the individual situation of both of these blocks so you can see that clearly for the 5 kg block the net force is 10 newton and 10 by 5 force by mass gives you the value of 2 which is the acceleration for this 5 kg block similarly for the 10 kg block the force acting is 20 so 20 by 10 which is force by mass gives you 2 which is the acceleration for 10 kg mass right so now once you understand this let's try a variation of this in the variation I'm going to change my system and this time I'm going to include both these blocks as part of my system so now my system has a total mass of 15 kg I'm considering both of them as a single body right so once again let's draw the free body diagram this time the system has a collective weight of 15 kg so it's uh, it has a collective mass of 15 kg and hence a collective weight of 150 Newton right because mass into gravity gives you weight so the collective weight of the system is 150 newtons right now once again it would have the collective system would have some normal reaction acting upwards let's denote it by n dash right so this n dash is the normal reaction which is acting from the ground now let's look at the horizontal forces now this time there is only a single force which is acting on this block which is the 30 newton force right now now I'm going to tell you another thing which you should keep in mind that is the forces that we list when we write F equal to MA the force here first of all is the net force and second of all it is the external force let me explain this now once I have the collection of these two blocks as my system then the forces that these two exert on each other are basically internal forces this is because these forces are being exerted by objects which are part of the system on the other objects which are also part of the system so these two both of them are part of the system and they are exerting some force on each other so when you write F equal to MA you need not count the internal forces the reason for this is very simple and it is that these forces will always exist as action reaction pairs and hence they will always cancel out so you if you want you can start listing those forces but they will always cancel out right so when we write the second law F equal to MA always remember that the force that you're writing should be the net force acting on that system and it should be a list of all the external forces so you could say that this F in this equation is the net external force so the F in this equation is nothing but the net external force acting on an object right so now we have listed down all the forces which are acting on the system please note that we have listed all the external forces I did not write n2 in both the direction if I were to do that I would have an n2 pointing towards left and another n2 pointing towards right which will cancel each other out right so we will always write the net external force right 
Moving on, we see that once again this collective system has no movement in the y direction. So, we can say that n dash is equal to 150. Right? Because in the y direction there is no motion. In the x direction there is a single force of 30 Newton and we can write F equal to MA for the X axis. So we would write 30 is equal to the collective mass of the system is 15 into the acceleration. So we directly get the value as 2. So you see that in this case when we took both of them as part of our system, our calculation was very simple. So this is the reason why it is very important to select the appropriate system which simplifies the analysis. Right. So we have discussed a lot of things in this session and I would advise you to go over these things a few times before moving on because you need to get these ideas very clear before we start analyzing further forces which we are going to learn. Right. So to summarize in this, in this session we learned that normal reaction is a force which is exerted through contact. Whenever two bodies are in contact, they will exert some normal on each other. And normal reaction is always a pushing force. And it will always act perpendicular to the surface of contact. Then we further saw the analysis and learned that the second law, F equal to MA, the F term is basically the net external force. Right. And finally, the last thing that you should remember is how we analyze the system after drawing free body diagrams. We write separate equations for X and Y and then apply the second law of motion. So that brings the session to an end. Thank you.